call the meeting of the uh, City Council Finance uh, meeting to order for Monday evening, October 5th, 2015 at 7 p.m. here in the Council Chambers or a little after 7, I think it's 7.06 p.m. Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Council, it's my distinct, uh, distinct honor uh, to uh, give a citation tonight to uh, a real good friend of the City of Brockton, uh, Mr. Charlie Altieri. Uh, Charlie has given so much to the City of Brockton. Of course, his company, Auburn Construction, has done a lot in Brockton and the surrounding communities. Uh, but also he volunteers time on oh, boards yeah. uh, and he gives a lot to charity. So uh, I, I, with that being said, Mr. Altieri, if you could come to the podium and he's joined tonight by his, uh, his lovely wife, Mrs. Altieri. And if I could, yeah, City of Brockton official citation uh, and with a caveat, uh, Charlie also it's just recently celebrated a, a, a milestone birthday. But um, official citation, be it known that the Brockton City Council hereby extends its congratulation to Mr. Charles Charlie M. Altieri in recognition of your blank birthday and the many <laughs> services that you have provided to the city. And be it further known that the City Council extends best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the City Council, Council Yaneri, and attested to, and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Council, Mr. Anthony Zioli, and it's offered uh, by myself, uh, Councilor Lodge Robert Sullivan. Mr. Del Thank you. Very good. I'd like to just say, I know there's a long meeting tonight, so I'm going to make this very quickly. Uh, with the exception of three years in the Korean War, I spent 83 years here in Brockton. I born and brought up here, and Brockton has made me what I am today. Very, very proud of Brockton and very proud of everyone in Brockton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And a very happy birthday to you as well, and I think you pretty much gave us close to what your age may be. But yeah, if we did the math, Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but, but you're still taking the way Jack Benny used to, just stay 39, right? There you go. God bless and good health to both you and your wife. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Counselor. I'd like to move number 16 out of order. Number 16 out of order. Motion to take 16 out of Second. order. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed, we'll take number 16 out of order. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Moriarty contacted me this morning and said that they weren't, they're not going to be able to make it here this evening. Um, so I'd like to postpone it till the next finance meeting in October. Second. Motion has been made and second that we take item number 16. We're going to postpone it to the next finance meeting in October. All in favor? Oppose? That be done. Thank you, Councillor, for that. Councillors, just before we uh, start, just a couple of things just for housekeeping purposes for some of the items that we do have on the agenda for this evening. Um, I did receive a, a message this morning, or I should say a letter this morning, indicating that um, I believe it is the uh, attorney uh, for Aquarius LLC is not going to be here this evening. And he did give it in writing. I'm writing to inform you in the Standing Committee on Finance as follows. My client, Aquarius LLC, has instructed me not to attend the meeting at 7 p.m. on October 5th of the Standing Committee on Finance and will accordingly comply with the client's uh, instruction. So please inform the committee on the finance that uh, the content of this letter and thank you for your cooperation and consideration in this matter. So Attorney uh, Andrew H. Cohen will not be present here this evening. Also, we have, uh, I have a quick note uh, from Rob May, our director uh, from the planning board, indicating that um, he's unable to attend this evening's meeting uh, of, the, of the finance committee in regards to the item of DW clock. TIF uh, and the EOA that we'll be discussing as well. And also our Chairman of the Board of Assessors, John O'Donnell, who's also down for a couple of items. He is also not able to attend because of another conflict with this particular date, but he wanted to make sure that uh, we're aware of why he is not present here this evening. So those three things uh, of, of regards to the meeting. And also Council Moynihan contacted me uh, earlier uh, this evening, indicated that he uh, was not feeling well, so he was not going to be present this evening. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, we'll start with item number one. Appointment, Officer David Santos of the Brockton Police Department as a weigher of trucks in the city of Brockton, invited David Santos. I believe this item was postponed from our last finance meeting. Councilor Rodriguez. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, I still have some of the same concerns that I had uh, when I first raised this issue. 
uh, over this appointment. So therefore, I would like to ask uh, to postpone this item to our next financial uh, council meeting. Second. second. On the motion, Mr. Chairman. Made the second on the if motion. I might, through you to yes, Council Rodriguez. Yes. Council, uh, have we contacted and made a disciplinary report on what your concerns are? It's not our job to supervise the police department, so. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, it might not be our job to supervise the uh, members of the police department, but it's our job to respond when there's an issue with, it, with, with some officers within the community. And I brought up these issues to the chief of police, and I was, I was hoping that this issue would be resolved until till today I haven't heard of the resolution to the issues that I brought forward. And as the, uh, as the first holding body that we are, we're being asked to approve an appointment to some, of someone. And I feel confident enough that I should hold off this, this appointment until such time that those concerns that I have I brought forward. Thank, Thank you. you uh, on the motion. Um, on the motion, Councillor. <coughs> Due to the fact that we're postponing this appointment, is he being uh, affected in any way with his job? Has he been um, taken off the street? Or is there anybody here that can maybe answer that? Maybe. Um first, I'm going to first I'm going to interject because I I don't want it to go to and I see it going oh, okay. to personality in person, and I don't want that to happen. Okay. I want to keep it to the appointment. I would rather. Just a motion has been made and seconded to postpone to the next finance meeting. Okay. Council Rodriguez is aware of the concerns the council has. Okay. I think it's up to he with those, the person that makes the appointment and through the police department to work together to solve the issue so that we get to the next finance meeting. It's either voted up or down. That's what I believe should be happening at this point in time. Okay. Chairman, I move the vote under Robert's rules. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to postpone to the next finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? It goes to the next uh, meeting. Opposition? Opposition. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor. Next item, Madam Clerk. Appointment Mario Lopez Alves of Brockton as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited Mario Lopez Alves. Is Mario here? Come right up, sir. Thank you. Anything you'd like to say? Um, I just want to help to help the people and get more involved in the community. Very good. Yeah. Councilors? Make a favorable recommendation back to the full council. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, pass to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank okay. you for your service. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk? Reappointment. David ACF of Bridgewater as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited David ACF. <laughs> Mr. ACF, how are you? Fine. Thank you. Good. Motion to make favorable to second. the full city council. Made and second to go back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full, full city council. Our sympathy as well. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you very much. Excellent. If I could, uh, I'd like to take uh, agenda item number five out of order due to the fact that number four and number six on the agenda really involves the water commission. So if we could take five out of order. Motion. Second. Second motion been made and second that we take number five out of order. All in favor? Opposed? We'll act on number, uh, item number five, Madam Clerk. Resolved that the City Council hereby request that a representative and or representatives of Aquaria appear before the Finance Committee to address questions pertaining to the desalinization water contract. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, Moises Pariente, General Manager, Aquaria Water, Peter Fairbanks, President of Aquaria, and Andrew Kahn, Attorney for Wilmer Cutter, Picker Pickering, Hale, and Door, LLP. Councilors, as you know, we've uh, postponed this from the last uh, finance meeting as well. And previous to that, during the uh, summer months, I think it was during the June or July month, we, uh, I can't remember, but I believe it was the July one that they came before us. And we did have um, questions and concerns, and we did receive some information uh, that we were looking for, but we did not receive the proper information that we were looking for as well. So that's why it's been postponed. So it's back before us this evening. And I think at this point in time, I think we're still looking for some other information uh, in regards to the same uh, matter. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you all should have received something uh, at your desk this evening in regards to a letter that comes from uh, Aquaria. I don't know if anyone's had the real time to digest it in regards to uh, what we've been discussing and them forwarding some other information. So it's at uh, the will of how you want to handle this this evening. Council Sullivan. Chairman, if I could, this is my, uh, my resolve initially uh, four years ago and then subsequently under this legislative session if the uh, representatives from Aquaria could come forward. Good 
Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, one question I had, and I do want to thank uh, your legal counsel. He gave us a pretty, uh, pretty good legal binder uh, relative to some of the discussion points we had in the past. Um, but one thing that I was a little disappointed uh, is when, uh, when you were here before the, the same night you told us you were moving to, to Mexico, um, and I don't know, when was that, July? I think it was July. 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 Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was stated to, to the council that, uh, and your legal counsel said that, and I wish he was here tonight, um, it, it was stated that there were um, documents that were used for marketing, marketing materials, the word brochure was brought up. Um, and in the, in the packet that was given and submitted to the clerk's office, 11 copies, there was nothing in there. And I did read this earlier today that was emailed. And you, you mentioned the municipalities and the private enterprises you speak to. But again, a sim simple thing of including a brochure, and it wasn't there. We, we have included three binders, three big binders with that, with that letter. And, and you have some brochures, some presentations, letters to different towns. Wh wh where is that? Uh, the clerk's office. When was that submitted? Uh, today. Yeah, that, that does. I, no, no, I, I agree with I you mean, that. This is becoming an absolute joke. I mean, how do you submit something today, sir, for a for a body, an elected body, voice of the people, to review when we don't even know that our clerk has it because it was submitted today? I mean, how do you do that in business? It doesn't make any sense. Common sense doesn't make any sense at all. So, I mean, this is like a broken record, and I keep doing this, and I keep doing this, and I keep doing this, and you're here tonight, and I appreciate it. But to submit something today that you could have submitted in July or August, right? Today's October 5. It doesn't make any sense. And I don't know if it makes any sense to any of my colleagues. But I'm sick and tired of asking these questions. I'm not going to ask you more questions. My opinion is set with what you people have done. I don't think you've done a heck of a lot. Maybe you've spoken to the mayor, but you have not, in my humble opinion, created any type of common relationship or bond with this body up here. And this is the legislative body. So again, thank you for being here tonight. I have no other further questions for you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillors, any other questions or concerns? Uh, I do echo the same um, sentiment that Councillor Sullivan has, has made because if something, something did come into the clerk's office other than what we have here, and again, I had to read it as well through email and then made sure that Mr. Condon and, and through the ladies here, the clerks, to make sure that we had a hard copy. But I, I was very unaware of the situation as well to know that there's a, another, did you say a three-ring binder in the, in the clerk's office? There's three binders. There's three, three binders. binders on okay, the, uh, so, the office, yes. so with that being said, I would think at this point Chairman, in time... I'm going to make a motion to postpone the next FinCom that would give us some time to dissect what that is, and I hope these gentlemen come before us again the next FinCon. That's my motion. Second. Motion's been made and seconded that we're going to postpone this until the next FinCon meeting, which would be October the 19th. All in favor of that? Oh, well, so be it. So, unfortunately, that's what direction we're going, and hopefully you'll be able to attend that next meeting. In the interim, we will talk to, and I will talk to the clerk uh, as soon as I can the first thing in the morning to make sure that um, we see that information and, and make sure it's all uh, given to each council so we can uh, digest it and, and hopefully we'll get to the resolution that we're trying to with this particular particular issue and, and that also coincides to what item number four says so I don't see things moving too fast on that but we'll go back to number four as well. Any other questions councils? Madam Clerk, let's go to number four. Order appropriation of six million three hundred and ninety five thousand six hundred and thirty one dollars from the fiscal year two thousand and sixteen unappropriated estimated receipts of Water Enterprise Fund to the DPW Water Enterprise Decel fixed charge. This appropriation will allow the Water Department to pay for the fiscal year two thousand and sixteen. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Larry Raleigh, DPW Commissioner. Councilors, again, this coincides with what we were just talking about with item number five, and we all realize that this particular appropriation was something that we, as a council, eliminated from the budget when it was finalized in, uh, in June for, for July's uh, beginning fiscal year. We are going to have to, at some point in time, deal with this issue, but again, I don't think we're going to do anything this evening not knowing that we have not received and been able to digest all the information that we want pertaining to what we've been asking for under number five. So, motion to postpone. That being said, second. On the motion, Council Sullivan. If I could, he's not an invited guest, but he's here and he's a uh, city solicitor. Could I ask Attorney Nazarello a question? Absolutely. Any objections? No. Attorney Nazarello. Good evening. How are you tonight? Attorney Nazarello, has the city been put on written notice at all for any breach, default breach? Not to my knowledge. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council. 
Any other questions on the motion? Motion has been made and seconded that we're going to postpone this particular item to October the 19th as well. All in favor? Opposed? That item will be back uh, for the same, uh, same date. Madam Clerk, uh, we'll go to item number six. Ordinance. An ordinance amending Chapter 23 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Pursuant to Chapter 23, Section 30, F6, in substitution for the water rate increase proposed by the Brockton Water Commission on February 10, 2015. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner, Ozzy Jordan, Chairman, Water Commission. Councillor Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, I did file this, and it, uh, I did ask you at last week's meeting to send this to finance. Mm -hmm. It's on its way to a third reading for, uh, for the ordinance change that this is. Uh, and I believe that when this came before us a few months back, I think part of the reason it failed was there was some confusion uh, that some of the councilors had, which is why I asked your Senate here tonight so that everybody can get their uh, questions answered about how this takes effect and when this would take effect. Uh, again, none of, us, none of us want to raise rates or taxes on anybody, but we are in dire situation, and I think Mr. Rowley can explain some things about the need for the... Uh, the, the need for the uh, funding that uh, we're under state order to get some work done and uh, we're very close to possibly the state taking us over, taking over and making us do some of these things uh, if we don't, uh, don't do this. So again, I'll turn it over to any of my colleagues through you to uh, get any questions answered. Great, Councilor. Any questions for the Council? Do you want to hear from the DPW Commission first? Mr. Commissioner, how are you? Fine, self. Anything that you'd like to uh, present? I, you know, to use Councilor Sullivan, I don't want to sound like a broken record up here, but we've, I've, I've talked and talked about, and trust me, I don't want to raise the rates either, but we, are, we all are common users of this system. So when you're a common user of this system, you have to pay for it to be maintained, replaced, whatever. And we're at the point now where some of these pipes have been in the ground since the early 1900s. Mm. They have to be replaced. We just found that out in... May or June, how can I forget that, that we went with, we, we all, a lot, of, a lot of us had water, but it could have been more severe. We could have gone for days without water. And without water, you have to shut the city down. So we need this rate hike to go forward so I can do some work that you asked me to do. Because all of you have asked me to do stuff time in and time out, water, sewer, snow, whatever, and I always say yes, and I get it done. You can't say I didn't. But it's going to come a point in time now this winter because my water budget, I don't have anything. It's like, it's like operating on a shoestring. I'm letting leaks go now, but in the winter time, it's going to be a public safety issue. I'm going to have to get them done. I don't have money to get this done. And if anyone wants to look at my budget, fine. Because outside of here, I'm being called a wine bag, a crybaby. I'm just telling you the truth here. I'm not up here BSing anybody. We need this rate. I need to get this work done for you people and your constituents and my customers. I'll answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Riley, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I have a quick question, and maybe if somebody, some of my colleagues can actually answer this. Um, I thought several weeks ago we had voted on the, um, on the Denapoli Amendment that actually stated that we were looking to increase rates at 10, 10, 10. So I don't know exactly, and I don't think I missed uh, many council meetings, so I don't know what happened between that particular uh, issue or item that we voted on to what is currently being proposed. Because the way I see it right now, at least based on what we read last week, it seems that um, you're asking or well, at least the uh, CFO is asking to increase the 30% payable by 2017, which to me would kind of um, invalidate the, the, the Denapoli uh, amendment. Mr. Chairman. Council Cruz. Through you, uh, we voted that down. Yeah. No. This, yes, we, yeah. we voted for what was called the Denapoli amendment, and then when it got to final passage, this council voted it down, right. voted the water rate increase down. This actually mirrors what was the Denapoli Amendment with an additional 2.5% in the fourth year because you can't file an exact, an exact duplicate of an order that got turned down. So 
We did pass the DiNapoli <coughs> Amendment at the thir to a third reading, and then back, I believe it was July, it might have been June, this council voted the water rate increase down. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, to the council from Ward 1, if we shot down the DiNapoli Amendment because of the 10-10-10, what makes you think that we're, this council now is going to support a 15% increase over the next two years? No, this is, this is not a 50% increase. 15? No, no. Because it's, it's a, according to the, uh, what we had last week, it said, according to the certification from our CFO, that it has to be done prior to the end of FY17, which to me is two years. I believe no maybe you want no Mr. Conlon to explain it's, that. It, it would be a 10% hike after January 1st of 16, 10% hike of 17, and 10% 10 of 18, and then 2% after that. See, I, think, I don't think that's actually very clear because Councillor Dubois brought that up when we were passing that vote, and it did say specifically that it needed to be taken care of by FY17. So we need to clarify that. Sure. There are two separate issues you're talking about, Councillor. The first is the actual rate increase, the thing that's in front of you now, I think uh, came out of Ordinance Committee, and as Councillor Rep, uh, Rep, Cruz represents, it is for three 10% increases, the first of which begins on January 1, 2016, followed in the fourth year by a 2.5% increase. In June, you voted down a similar. What you're referring to was my certification letter, and what I'm saying in my certification letter is that isn't sufficient in terms of speed to be sure that you will have enough revenues to do all the things you want to do and gain my certification. That's all it is, is my opinion. So what you've got in front of me isn't my certification, but an actual act to raise the rates by 30 percent. Mr. Condon, I understand, I understand that, but what you're saying is the CFO of this city, if you can't certify a project, does that mean that we start digging the streets at FY17 then we have to stop because we don't have enough no. resources to continue no. it? No. No. What it means is if you want to be sure that you've got sufficient revenues to take care of all of the obligations, you ought to be doing this more rapidly. The Water Commission asked for 30 percent in one year. That's because many years had gone by without an increase. My certification simply says, as I look into the future, I don't see that there are sufficient revenues in place to take care of the obligation that the water system owes to the general fund, which in itself is almost $2 million of revenues that we've supplied out of the general fund to support the water operations and also take care of the water operations. Not all of that will be accomplished by a 30 percent rate increase, only two-thirds of which is accomplished right away. That's all that letter says. So we may not be able to get the general fund whole. That's what that letter meant. But I, I think this needs to be uh, made very clear, even on the orders that were submitted, because it's very vague. It's very vague to the folks that are watching us at home. I don't think it's vague. It says no, 10 I think percent over three I years. I think it's vague. Oh, well, what do you want it to say? It says 10 percent on an effective date. Does it say that? It does it say that right here? It says in the in the ordinance that was passed. Yes, sir, it does. It says 10 percent on actual dates. I don't know what it says in the summary. I don't produce the summary. It says 10 percent on active dates, actual dates. January 1, January 1, January 1, January 1, 16, 17, 18, 19, 10 followed by 10 followed by 10 I, followed I can, by 2 and I half. can count, Mr. Condon. I can count. But well, that's what the order says, Councillor. That's what the ordinance that came out of your own but committee But I'm going says. by I'm going by what what your recommendation to this body was, saying that you cannot certify. I didn't certify anything which had less than 20 percent accomplished. In, in a shorter period of time. This ordinance doesn't do that, so you don't have a certification which is in effect. However, it doesn't mean you shouldn't act on this because you've got nothing in front of you with respect to rates except this particular rate increase. That's all that's in front of you. Nothing else. Council, if I could just, if I could just, uh, you know, I think straighten away, I think it is straightened away because I think Mr. Condon's made it very clear. And what is in front of us is the same as what the order was uh, given to the clerks, indicating that it's a 10 percent January 1, 2016, 10 percent January 1, 2017, 10 percent January 1, 2018, with a 2.5 percent on each rate block bills on January 1, 2019. I understand what you're saying, but what he was also saying, I think you're referencing the amount of money that was just passed at last week's meeting in regards to work that has to be done pursuant to water um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for, Mr. Con well, you know what I mean, all, all the water work that we need to do within, within the streets and in, in, um, in, uh, maintaining and, and those types of things with the pipes, it, he did indicate that in order 
for it to be done, he would be asking that we would approve a water rate increase, and I think that's what's before us. Am I correct? I mean, yes, in, and in I, w I would have preferred small that terms. I think that's right. I would have preferred it to be accomplished more quickly. Right. These right. two proceeded on two parallel paths. One was a request for borrowing authorizations. There wasn't any water rate increase uh, in front of the in front of me at that moment. I think it had been filed by Councillor Cruz, but it wasn't, it hadn't been acted on. All I said was, I think you need to do it. If you want to be sure that you're not going to have an impact on services, you ought to do it more rapidly. Again, Water Commission asked for 30 percent January, uh, July 1 of this year. You didn't grant that. Right. The Dinapoli Amendment would have accomplished 10 percent as of July 1 of this year. We're already six months behind on that. I was simply trying to get us caught up with that certification letter. But that my certification doesn't require you to take any action. It just informs you as to what my opinion is. You've taken an action out of ordinance committee, which is 10 percent, January 1, followed by three, uh, two other 10 percents, followed by a two and a half successive years. It's better than doing nothing, which is where we are right now. Correct. No, I agree. I agree that we ought to do something. I'm just telling you that when I, to the, to the average person in this community, when the CFO says, you know what, I cannot, I cannot certify this beyond a certain year, there's some concerns. Yeah, I, I would hope so. Yeah. There, there's some concerns. So that's the concern that I'm actually bringing forward in the yep. sense because I don't want us to start a project and then halfway through the project we, we can't complete we won't, it because we, won't, we, we don't won't have the funds to do it. We won't be doing that, but you're, what you're going to see is unless revenues materialize in the general fund budget, some of which I think ought to be in the general fund budget already. I think you all know my position with respect to leaving the two and a half levy on the table. But I don't know what everybody's going to do on all of those things in the future. All I can see is what's happening right now. I don't particularly feel comfortable with some of the fiscal actions that are being taken right now. This at least is a step in the right direction. But again, it defers for several years what the Water Commission said it needed right now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think, Mr. Condon, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, with everything that we uh, did just last week, not that I want to go to last week's meeting, but based upon your letter, is pretty much the same as what you've been telling uh, the city council since back to like 2000, 2001. Yes. In regards to certain projects that this is the way you feel about and expect maybe that we're going to do in a two and a half percent over, and we're not doing that. And Never I, have. Exa none of it's ever happened, and we've got through the, That's the, right. the trade of getting the projects done. So the, the projects have got done, but we've also seen, Councillor, we've seen uh, impacts on service levels in this city exactly. that I don't think anybody likes, but exactly. you've got a choice to make yeah. because you've either got the revenues to pay for what the services are or you have to cut the services. And there have been service cuts in this city as a result of not having sufficient revenues. Just ask the school department if you don't that's believe exactly that. Right. That's the case. I think here we're in a major situation. I think that's why the Ordinance Committee went back to a redesign to bring something forth. Yes. And, and I think Councilor Cruz says it right there. Nobody wants to have to do this. None of us want to have to do it. We don't like to set a tax rate in December, Nobody. but we have to because it's law. You know what I mean? But no one's even doing anything to say we're at a 2.5% override because that would have to come out of this council and that hasn't happened. So with that being said on this Mr. matter. Chairman, if I could, as, as, uh, uh, as chair of the ordinance committee, for those members that don't sit on the ordinance, just uh, real quickly, again, uh, when we were working on this after February 10th when the commission took the vote on the 30% proposal, um, simultaneously we had directed the CFO to come up with a subsequent one, which we call the Denapoli. It did pass uh, out of the, out of the uh, subcommittee, out of the uh, ordinance committee, and it failed here. It didn't uh, get the requisite uh, majority vote. Um, so just to let you know, those that don't sit on it, when Mr. Cruz submitted it, it did pass unanimously out of the ordinance committee. And I just want everybody to know that it is a substitute to the water increase, and it's specific as such, 10, 10, 10, 2 and a half. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Stewart. Mr. Chairperson, uh, Mr. Rowley, uh, just a question around um, the... The 10 percent increase, what does that translate into additional revenue for that, for that um, year? We did figure it out, Councillor, for 3,000 cubic feet, which we, that's a state average, which myself I use probably about 1,500 cubic feet. For 3,000 cubic feet, it's $11 more a quarter. Okay. For, for so it would be $44 increase over 3,000 cubic feet, but it's just mostly multifamilies that use that. I mean, I don't know what anybody uses here, but I don't even come close to that. Excellent. And then um, just help me with the math. So what's the total revenue for the city? Um, I mean, I Jay, do you know that for the 10%? About 1.2 million. Excellent. Okay. And I certainly support this. I believe I supported um, the recommendations earlier, um, not the 30% in one shot, but um, the Denapoli Amendment. 
And I will say that if the worst thing I was called was um, a, a crybaby, uh, I, I take it. You know. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. There was a few adjectives in front of that, okay? I just didn't want to say it tonight. <laughs> I, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Council Bonds? Yes, actually, Mr. Riley, I think this question is for you as well. So looking at this with the, um, the projected dates, the 16, 17, 18, 19, does the 2.5% increase in 19 go past 19, or does this mean that we'll have to, the council will have to come back again to set another rate or, or to reevaluate yes. this? You're right. You will. We will. Okay. I won't. I won't be here. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's hopefully all of you are, but um, this yes. is just setting this in yes, this particular Yes, this is just frame. like a four-year okay contract, all right, if you want to call it that. Okay. All okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Rally. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Council. Council, is any more questions pertaining to this matter? Move for a favorable recommendation to the full council. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed Thank you. Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, thank you, Mr. Condon, as well, and Mr. Ozzie Jordan for being here as well. Item number seven. Order appropriation of 218000 from the unappropriated receipts fiscal year 16 tax levy to the police department and personal services other than overtime, 165000 Personnel department employee benefits, 51000 Treasurer's Medicare tax, 2000 in order to provide funding for six additional police recruits and their benefits for six months. This is a conditional certification for fiscal year 16 only. This funding would allow for six new recruits in addition those already in the budget bring in the size of the requested class to 11. The CFO cannot provide a positive certification for the years after fiscal year 16 because this action exacerbates the fiscal budgetary imbalance which we are now experiencing. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief of Police, Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director. Excuse me. Mr. Conan, good evening. Good evening. Uh, councils, let me first explain. I think most of you understand that when we do the budget in May and submit it to you in June, we have an estimate as to how much money is going to be available from uh, tax levy growth, not the two and a half increment. Not that at all, but how much is available because there has been new investment in the city. Not because of market price appreciation on homes, new investment in the city. A homeowner adds a deck, somebody invests in his business, that creates new growth. In the setting of the budget, we always estimate low on that because we don't want to appropriate the money and then find it didn't materialize and have to restrict or re recall that money after it's already being spent. So in this year's budget, as we have in several years past, we estimated $800,000 of tax levy growth for not two and a half, but for new growth in the city. If you remember your forecaster books, that money is in there. The assessors now say they haven't got the full value certified. They think they're going to do much better than this, but they think perhaps as much as $2 million in new growth. They don't have full value certification from the Department of Revenue yet, so we haven't got that full amount, but they're confident that we will probably have at least 1.75 certified. There are several appropriation orders in front of you tonight that would spend some of that money either on contract settlements or as on this one uh, for hiring six additional police officers for half a year which were not in the original budget. So that's the source of this and the purpose of it is to hire officers. Councils? Any questions, concerns? Just that, like Council Mr. Sullivan. Again, I brought it up last week and I just want to make sure we clarify. It says uh, requested class to 11. Was it 12? Did we clarify it's that's, 12? That's right? exactly 12. right. That, that, that was a typo out of my office, Council. Yes, sir. The, the, mayor clar the mayor clarified that for me the other day. It is 12. Yep. Chairman, I make a favorable recommendation back to Council. Second. second. Motion has been made and second. It goes back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. Thank you, Council. Thank I think everybody's going to appreciate you, having Project. those officers in the class. I do also I want to mention that the, the chief had uh, contacted me on Sunday and indicated that he could not be here this evening. I know Captain Williamson's here if we have any questions in regards to uh, the police department on these uh, matters. Item number eight, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 20000 from overlay surplus of fiscal year 2008-20000 to the library personnel services overtime 8000 library purchase of service 12000 to provide the funding necessary for the agreement to add to a grant from the Library Foundation for ex the extending of hours at the West and East branches, eight hours per week at each branch for the balance of the fiscal year. This funding adds to the contribution of 75000 from the Brockton Library Foundation. 
Furthermore, requesting that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditure of 75000 from the Brockton Library Foundation for purposes of providing an additional eight hours per week at each of the West and East branches for the rest of this fiscal year. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Keith Cochet, Assistant Library Director. I'll spend a second on, these, on the funding of this one, too. Sure. Uh, this, uh, this, this sometimes comes before the City Council, but it's not a typical action. Uh, every year when we set the annual tax rate and set the budget, a portion of that tax levy is reserved for abatements and exemptions. It's usually about 2 percent, roughly, or maybe a little bit more of the actual estimated levy. And that money then goes into a reserve account called the overlay. That's what this is. And while these cases are pending, uh, that money is used to pay abatements which are granted or exemptions which are granted or cases which are then filed in front of the appellate tax board require us to hold on to that money <coughs> until those cases either settle in our favor or in some fashion the, the cases are uh, resolved. Periodically, the mayor asks, uh, whether it's Mayor Harrington, Balzotti units, or in this case, Mayor Carpenter, periodically he asks the Board of Assessors to examine the overlay accounts for all years for where there's money left to see if the money that is still sitting on the books is in fact needed or if in fact some of it can be returned to the use of the city because the case is pending against that amount no longer add up to what's in there. There's a specific calculation that they have to go through according to the Department of Revenue regulations, and they did do that. The mayor asked for it in June. We got a letter back from the board in July, and they provided surpluses for three years, and there were communications that were made to the city council for those three years, 2008, 2009, and 2011. 2010 doesn't have a surplus. The total of it is about 750000 from those three years. We have a couple of small appropriation requests being made out of one of those years. This is one of them. And the balance, as you see as we go through the agenda, we're asking simply to move out of the overlay account into the stabilization fund. An overlay surplus, once it's declared, can be appropriated with the recommendation and approval of the mayor and the approval of the city council, like any other appropriation, with a majority vote of the city council. So we're asking for the city council to move this money for a couple of small spending purposes, and then the balance we're asking to put into the stabilization reserve. We all think it's, I think all of you would agree, we don't have enough in that account. And we're trying to settle contracts for a couple in front of you tonight out of estimated revenues, but we're probably going to need more than those revenues supply, and we're going to need these overlay accounts to try to get it accomplished. So that's, that's the basic explanation. I think on this particular one, if I'm not mistaken, yes, sir. Keith is here to explain what's going on with this, but basically it's a city matching a grant from the Library Foundation to get more hours at both the east and west side branches this year. Very good. Sounds good. Council, Council Sullivan. Mr. Connor, just a quick question. You mentioned you know, units having to Belzotti and Mr. Carpenter. Uh, so it, it, it's a mechanism that we can utilize, <coughs> and we have utilized it in the past, but yes. this is going back all the way to 2008. Yes, well, even earlier. Uh, I mean, 2000, there aren't any surpluses for the years prior to 2008. I think those accounts have been exhausted. Uh, the 2008, 2009 had account uh, balances that were adequate to cover the pending cases. 2010 is basically used up, okay. and 2011 has an account balance. 12 and 13 are still in play. The um, uh, assessors have said to me they, m they believe there will be more than this available by the time they move through the fall, but they've got cases, some of them are very large, that haven't quite settled out for their satisfaction yet, and there may be even more, but right now this is what's there. So DOR doesn't have to? No. Okay, great. This is in totally within the Board of Assessors' within. domain. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Bonds. Yes, uh, thank you. Mr. Um, Choquette, can I ask you a few specific questions with regard to the documents? Good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, the MOA that was um, submitted to us, is that pretty standard for, for these kinds of agreements? Is, or, or is anything different in this that we should know from any other one that has been submitted in the past? Well, not as far as I know. Okay. So it's pretty standard? Well, uh, as far as I know. That was, I think, drawn up through the, the law office. So. Um, there's nothing unusual about it uh, that I'm aware of. Okay, okay. And um, with regard to the amount of funds that um, that's going to be coming from the foundation and what's requested of the city, could it all not have come from the foundation? What, how what, how, how did, the, did the city kind of get involved in submitting some of the funds? Is, is that... Well, oh, um, maybe that's Mr. Condon, the foundation I guess. Uh, made uh, the offer... Uh, 
to, to, to provide uh, the, the initial grant, um, but um, they, they had in mind that we would uh, use some different uh, uh, staffing and um, uh, to provide the same staff that we have on uh, an ordinary uh, night when, you know, um, um, some additional funds were required. Um, so, um, yeah, no, I understand, but why didn't it all just come out of the foundation? How did the city get wrapped up into giving the 20000 Well, uh, because in order to use the, city, the foundation's money, we had to negotiate with the union how we would apply those different, uh, that different source of funds because that's their work at those branches. And we had to determine exactly how we would staff them. It wasn't going to be economic to hire additional persons just for one year's worth of grant money. We mm -hmm. have no idea this grant money is going to continue. Mm -hmm. So it's basically being done on overtime. And there were certain costs that are involved with the staffing of the East and West Side Library, for, for example, security guards, mm -hmm. which the foundation wasn't willing to pay for. So okay. basically, what we're doing here is ensuring that the $75,000 accomplishes those extra hours that we were looking for, and it required 20000 in city funds to do that. Okay, that, that's why I wanted to find out how the city got involved, because it seemed the lion's share was coming out of the foundation, so why didn't they just take it all? Um, also, I had a question, I had a question, a question, a question, a question. Um, oh, does this wipe out the funds of the foundation or no? 75, the 75, is there more money in the foundation fund? I, I don't know. We don't keep their books, but I would doubt it. I would doubt it. I don't think this would have, I, I don't think they would have simply expended all their monies on, on this purpose, but okay. I don't know for sure. Okay. Is there any way to find that out? Or is that... Uh, I don't, I'm, is I don't that something that the council would care about, or no? He may be able to answer that uh, that question. I mean, he would know somewhat of it. You, there's still funds in that. The, the foundation is a separate, separate yeah. from the city. The library foundation exactly. is a five hundred one c three. It really has. Uh, their, right. They exist to help the city, but the city has no control over their fundraising or their or their actions. Mm. Different boards. Right. I, I'm just concerned that if this is kind of a one-time deal, and then we start to implement the the new staff and all these new things, and then we have to take it away because we can't afford it. I'm just yeah, nervous. Yeah, and it, it may happen next year that they won't be able to provide yeah, it, that's and that's my why concern. the city was insisting that we do it through overtime as opposed to hiring new staff. Okay. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councils. Uh, <coughs> Can I make a favor of recommendation? A second, second, Mr. Cruz. Second. <laughs> Motion has been made and second to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Oh, yeah. Opposed goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Item number nine. Order appropriation of $366,330 from the landfill reserve account to Thatcher Street Landfill for maintenance, repair, replacement, and other related projects for the continuing maintenance of the Thatcher Street Landfill. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Financial Officer Larry Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Commissioner, how are you? Good. Good. Um, Councilors, this is, um, this is a fund that was set up years ago, I believe, when they finally capped that landfill. So I am looking for some additional money for um, we have wildlife that we have to remove from there. It's, it's groundhogs that are digging down to the liner, and we don't want them to break the liner, so we have to have them removed. And there's a cost to that. And also there's a filter scrubber that the flare burns the methane, and the hydrogen sulfide is, goes through this air scrubber, which purifies it when it lets it out to the atmosphere. That hasn't been replaced in 10 or 12 years. So we have to replace that. And that's, that I'm getting costs anywhere from 128 to 150,000 to replace that. And that's 128,000 pounds of filter media that have to be removed and replaced. So that's why I'm looking for this extra money. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Let's do it. Where did the original fund, where does that million one come from? Uh, when the landfill was capped, uh, I think back in the uh, units administration uh, toward the end of it, uh, there was a money paid into the city by the contractor which did it, and the purpose of that money was to establish this reserve for the maintenance of the landfill afterwards, and that's where it came from. And how did they come up with their money? They mined that back then? Is that what they, uh, wasn't did it, they take wasn't, crash Wasn't out? it agreed a certain amount of money per, per load or something of the stuff they were using to cap it? I think, that, I think that's how it worked. I'm not okay. positive about that. That's my memory, though. And that second page of what we have is, shows fiscal, fiscal year 2015 of 1,103,000 in the account now? 
Yes, it's about. We're looking to take out 336,000. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Council Stewart. Uh, Mr. Rowley, so when this goes, does this go through a typical procurement process? Yes, it will. Yes. And uh, is there, um, are there any Brockton companies that can do this work? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I can't answer that. So when the procurement goes out. I, I don't believe there is any Brockton people that could do this. I see. This is a specialty that's done by just a few different companies. So we will, we'll, you know, we'll put a bid out there and whoever bids on it, the lowest right. bidder will take. So. And, and when a bid is placed, is it, um, I'm just trying to figure out how to folks know that it's there. So it's the typical. Oh, we advertise it. That goes right through the procurement office. He advertises it wherever he has to. Got it. It's all over the place so people can see it. Right. Thanks. Thank you, Council. Any other questions, Council? Council? Move for a favorable recommendation to the Second. full City Council. Second. Been made and seconded to go back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. Thank you. Item number 10, Madam Clerk. Order a transfer of $16,590 from the ambulance receipts account to the department equipment for the following two purchases. 15,690 for nine perform mobile software licenses for the use of the contracted ambulance service. This will provide the ability for a two-way flow of dispatching information between fire alarm and the ambulances in the field. Included in this request is the annual maintenance fee for support services of the mobile licenses. This enhances safety of the members and security of information. Second 900 for the purchase of three emergency medical dispatch guide cards with racks. These will be used by the fire alarm operators when receiving and dispatching emergency medical incidences in compliance with current standards. Invited on Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Financial Officer Michael Williams, Fire Chief. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Council. How are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Any uh, anything you want to say or any questions? You just want to take some questions? No, this is pretty straightforward. I think it's straightforward. Um, yes. These nine licenses are required um, to put new computers into the ambulances that we started back in July. Um, it's the eight ambulances that cover the city and also the one supervisor vehicle. Um, the three flip card dispensers, um, pretty straightforward. They need to be updated occasionally and this is the time that needs to be done. So we now have three stations in the fire alarm office and each station needs a new card file. Great. Favorable recommendation? Second. Second. On the motion. On the motion, Councilor Stewart. Uh, Chief Williams, how are you? Good evening. Uh, just, uh, a little bit of latitude. So how, how is the uh, relationship with the city and the new ambulance company going? It's, everything's going very well. So yep. it's meeting your expectations? Or? Absolutely. Great. Yep. Thanks. Everything's going very smoothly. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank You're you, welcome. Mr. Chevers. Thank you, Councilor. Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Back to the full Mr. City Chairman, council. could, could, council could I just go off track? I just had one question uh, for the chief um, that some constituents you. have asked me. I'll let you go. That's Chief, um, a few years ago, the city passed an ordinance for fire pits where the fire department, were, we'd have to get a license. Anybody want to have outdoor Correct. fire pit? And, and I, I didn't know the process. Could you just take, do, do you know what the process sure. is? Because people have asked me. I don't know. Absolutely. You, the individual will have to go to the fire alarm office, which is at 52 Pleasant Street. It's on the second floor of the fire alarm building. Um, the Fire Prevention Bureau is there. They can fill out an application, and we go and inspect the property. There's... Uh, regulations that have to be followed, distances where the fire pit can be. So we send out an inspector. Uh, as long as all the stipulations are in place, you pay a $25 fee, and 25. that's per, per year. Okay. Um, it has to be renewed every year. It okay. doesn't have to be reinspected, but it has to be renewed every year. Renewed every year. Right. Thank you for that. You're Thank welcome. you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. On that question, so Absolutely. if I allegedly had a fire pit, um, <laughs> no, uh, what, what, what now? <laughs> Counselor. <laughs> you need, or if you I know need, someone that has one. Right. <laughs> in this stuff. This friend you? of yours <laughs> would, have to have, would have to have a permit from the Fire Prevention Bureau. And there's a $25 yearly fee. And that's 52 Pleasant Street. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Right tell your friend that, Counselor. Tell your friend. I'm going to go tell him right away. Oh, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> What's going on in your backyard? Right? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Mr. Else? Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Councilor. Chief, does that apply to the portable units as well? Yeah, the portable fire pits? Fire, no, well, they're not technically should they should not be portable. 
they should stay in the same location that is right. Approved. But I'm I'm saying something that you'd buy at Home Depot or something yes. like that. So yep. does that have chimneyers or fire pits? They have different names, but right. they're basically all the so same. It's the same rule for all of them. Correct. So uh, Council Barnes is not probably the only one that's actually violating this rule. I'm not violating. I am not admitting to anything. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chim. <laughs> that's good. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you. you, Chief. Appreciate it. That's true, me. Item number 11. Order appropriation 560,000 from fiscal year 2009 overlay surplus 220,000 and fiscal year 2011 overlay surplus of 340,000 to the stabilization fund. This funding comes from the surplus and overlay accounts as identified by the Board of Assessors in a letter dated July 20th, 2015. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John O'Donnell, Assessor's Chairman. Mr. Conan, thank you. Good evening, Councils. Again, I, I think this was explained in my earlier explanation on the use of this uh, overlay surpluses, and these two appropriations are just going to stabilization. Federal recommendation. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded and sent back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full City Council. Thank you, Mr. Conan. Item number 12. Order appropriation of 130000 from the overlay surplus of fiscal year 2008 to the stabilization fund to provide additional funding in the stabilization reserve. The funding comes from the overlay surplus amounts as declared by the Board of Assessors. The total declared for fiscal 2008, 9, and 11 was 750000 inclusive. The intended use is 60000 from the fiscal year 2008 amount, 40000 for holiday decorations, and 20000 for a library grant match but also the intent is moving the balance to the stabilization fund. The total of stabilization from the three years will be 690000 Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John O'Donnell, Assessor's Chairman. Councils, if I could make one comment on yes. this. Uh, the, the mayor filed a request for $40,000 to be appropriated out of this reserve to um, uh, holiday decorations, as is mentioned in that. I don't see, I don't, I'm not sure if it was dropped off the agenda inadvertently or if it was passed under suspension of the rules last night. But all of these appropriations don't add up to the full amount. The one that's missing is $40,000 submitted by the mayor at the end of September for mm -hmm. purchasing of holiday decorations. So if, it, if it's not on this agenda, we can take care of it uh, at the next meeting. But Okay. Very good. Thank you. But I, wasn't, I, I wasn't sure if it maybe been done under suspension. John Marion sometimes pushes pretty hard. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no nothing was done at the last meeting okay. in regards to that. No, so no, I'm going to no, guess no. We, we dropped it off the agenda in inadvert yeah. inadvertently. Exactly. Okay. Councils? Move for a favorable recommendation. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to go back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carney, for that, too. Item number 13. Order appropriation 488,156 as follows. From the unappropriated estimated receipts fiscal year 16 tax levy 450,156 to the cemetery department personal services other than overtime 20,747, cemetery department personal services overtime 17,387, DPW Highway 160,931, personal services other than overtime <coughs> DPW Highway personal services overtime 73,900. DPW Maintenance Personal Services Other Than Overtime 15,653. DPW Maintenance Personal Services Overtime 9,994. Library Department Personal Services Other Than Overtime 12,805. Library Department Personal Services Overtime 900. Public Property Personal Services Other Than Overtime 23,104. Public Property Personal Services Overtime 3,225. Parking Authority Personal Services Other Than Overtime 30,156. Park Recreation Department Personal Services Other Than Overtime 58,354. Park Recreation Department Personal Services Overtime 23,000. A further appropriation of 38,000 from the unappropriated Refuge Enterprise estimated receipts of 38,000 to the DPW Refuge Personal Services Other Than Overtime 28,000 and DPW Refuge Personal Services Overtime 10,000. The CFO, in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifies that the financial resources and revenues of the City of Brockton are and will be adequate for fiscal year 16 only to support the proposed appropriation from various sources of 488156 to various departments 
departments for purposes of settling a three-year contract with the laborers union. This is a conditional certification for fiscal year 16 only. He is able to provide the certification for fiscal year 16 because of the funding comes from unappropriated fiscal year 16 revenues, primarily, primarily tax levy growth. However, for fiscal year 17 and beyond, this contract will be exacerbate the budgetary imbalance described in this fiscal year 16 budget letter and in the credit reports of Moody's and Standard and Poor. These are available on the Finance Department webpage. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening, Mr. Conant. Good evening. Uh, first of all, the contract, I'll explain the, I think we've already discussed what the funding source is. Uh, the reason for the conditional certification is the, uh, is the financial uncertainty regarding the city's budget. So that's, we've got the money this year. I just don't know about future years. Um, the contract is for three fiscal years and it's fully retroactive for each of those years. So we have the, um, uh, this particular union and in the other unions similarly situated under the 1162 uh, labor union umbrella it includes water and sewer. This is just for the laborers, not the water and sewer, not for the inspectors, not for the clerks or several other unions with trades. We're still at the table of those. But this particular contract re would be retroactive for each year back to J July 1, 2013. So we're in the last year of what this contract would settle. These guys have been nearly three years without an increase. Um, the basic pattern is 2% as of July 1, 2013, a second 2% as of July 1, 2014, and a final one and a quarter percent for July 1, uh, 2015, this last fiscal year. And in addition, we're providing them with uh, one-time cash bonus payments equal to 1% of base wages for fiscal uh, 14 and 1% of base wages for fiscal 15, no bonus for fiscal 16. So that's, that's the basic settlement. Uh, the reason the overtime dollars are so high is that uh, many of these folks work on our winter storm requirements, and this is settling two years' worth of winters, one of which was just especially brutal. So uh, it's an expensive contract because of that, but on an ongoing basis, it's, it really isn't. It's less than 6% over the three years. We did get an agreement from this union that they would be willing. We were at the table for a long time over the issue of putting uh, GPS systems in the city trucks. Um, they've agreed, but not in this contract. They have agree, agreed that they will go to the table for coalition bargaining with the other 1160 shoe units to address this issue. So that, that was the major thing that we, uh, we obtained in this contract was imposition of GPS at some point. These men and women have been waiting a long time for yes, some sir. type of a settlement. So, councilors? Make a favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to go back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back thank to the full councilors. city council. Yeah, this, thank uh, you, Mr. This will be much appreciated, so thank you. I'm, I'm sure. Item number 14, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation 167,000 from the unappropriated estimated receipts fiscal year 16 tax levy 167,000 to the library personal services other than overtime 165,500 library personal services overtime 1500. In order to provide funding for all of the costs including retroactive costs of a collective bargaining agreement between the city and its library union employees local 808 unit of SEIU for the three-year period of 7-1-2013 through 6-30-2016. This year, this three-year settlement provides for increases to base wages of 2% for fiscal year 14, 2% for fiscal year 15, and 1.25% for fiscal year 16 for a total of 5.25%. It also provides for a one-time cash payment equal to 1% of base wages of fiscal year 14 and 15. This funding is from tax levy new growth, which is greater than budgeted, not from the unused levy amounts inside the levy limit allowed from 2.5% annual growth. This is a conditional certification for fiscal year 16 only. The funding is available for only, only fiscal year 16 because it comes from unappropriated fiscal year 16 tax levy revenues. However, for fiscal year 17 and beyond, this contract's cost will exhibit the budgetary imbalance described in the CFO's fiscal year 16 budget letter and credit report of Moody's and Standard and Poor invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, this is the same basic pattern as the other contract. This time it's for the library union, all the library employees with the exception of the assistant director, which is in a separate union, and the custodians who are covered in the laborers contract that we just discussed. But all the librarians themselves are covered by this same pattern. Same situation. Councilors? Favorable recommendation. Again. Again. Which has been made and seconded to send back full, to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, councilors. Thank that will be Carter. much appreciated, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they appreciate it as well. Thank you. 
Item number 15. Order that the City Council approves the boundaries of the proposed D.W. Clark Economic Opportunity Area, more particularly described as 14 East Union Street, Assessors Map 129, Plot 1, Parcel ID 129-233, East Union Street, and approves the application for approval of the D.W. Clark EOA to the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council, EACC. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Rob May, Planning Director, Michael Gallerini, Executive Director, Brockton 21st Century Corp, Gordon Carr, Consultant to B21, Jeffrey Burek, President of DW Clark, and Richard Bland, Attorney. Good evening, gentlemen. Gordon, you're going to start? Good evening. Yes, just on the, um, I figure I'll start on the EOA in Rob's uh, absence, just because I have some familiarity of the program and the purpose and that sort of thing, if there are any questions on, on the um, creation of the economic opportunity area itself. Very good. Anyone have any, uh, you can make a pre any presentation or just? Um, no, it's, you're probably familiar, this has been a process sequentially that um, in the past for the incentive program, uh, it was necessary to create the EOA for the tax incentive uh, to go through. That's a product of something that was done uh, when the program was initially created in 1994 and those EOAs would have 20 year lives, which was forever in 1994, yet communities like Brockton um, began creating them right away and here we are uh, and many of them are expiring and so the model now is um, to create site-specific EOAs for projects going forward and in this case it's specifically so that DW Clark is able to access a state incentive it has no uh, impact on, uh, on on Brockton but there's a, a tax deduction for the uh, renovation of abandoned buildings the only provision is they have to be in an economic opportunity area. I believe it's in uh, the Department of Revenue's regulations. So the, the mechanism here is to allow them to, <coughs> to access the deduction for some of the expenses related to the renovation of the building. Very good. Councilors? Councilor Cruz? Thank you. So just a little information. This is the old LeBaron Foundry piece of property? It is. And what does DW Clark do? Well, we will have, um, we're going to, talk about all of that and I'll, I'll introduce uh, you to those folks if you want to do it now we can do it now would you would you like you that think, I think that comes in at number sure. 17 if I'm not oh, mistaken oh I'm sorry okay yeah. so if you want there's a, there's a tip that goes along with the council right. we'll, we can so that'll be done in numbers which will be next because number 16 has been postponed until the next uh, finance meeting already so we'll be doing that next yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I echo the sentiments of Mr. Cruz. I'd like to know before we take a vote on this what, what yep. the business practice is. Oh, oh by all means. Yep. Uh, by all means. Well, well, we'll do that. Uh, with that, then I'll, um, if it's all right, introduce uh, Jeff Burek, the President and CEO of uh, DW Clark, to talk about uh, his business, and then um, I'll stand by if there are questions related to the TIF or the, or the process or anything as well. Very good. Yep. Sure. Thank, you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, I'm Jeff Burek. I uh, am the owner operator of DW Clark Company. Uh, we have facilities in uh, East Bridgewater and Taunton, Mass. We've got about uh, close to 50 employees. And uh, we're a manufacturing company, uh, highly uh, engineered metal parts and assemblies that go into the military, uh, power generation, transportation, pump and valve industries. Um, most of our sales are domestic uh, to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we deal with uh, companies like GE, Siemens, Dresser, to name a few. We have direct sales to the military as well. Um, our parts, uh, if you will, go into uh, larger assemblies that get put into things like uh, gas turbines, pumps, valves, and so forth. And uh, we work closely with a lot of these uh, OEMs uh, to produce the parts that, you know, to meet their qualifications. Um, our manufacturing uh, f facility and processes consist of uh, a lot of metal working type processes like machining, fabrication, metal casting, um, but uh, we also have a lot of support operations uh, that uh, revolve around engineering, design, and uh, inspection of those parts before we um, actually ship them. Uh, we are actually involved in a lot of what they call additive manufacturing these days, which involves uh, uh, computer-aided design, working with uh, uh, things like 3D printing to produce a lot of our parts, and, it, and it's just, um, you know, basically uh, part, part of our future. Um, our current wor workforce consists of about 30 uh, direct labor, about 20 staff, and... Um, 
you know, the, the workforce is fairly high skilled. Uh, a lot of the training uh, we, we do ourselves. Uh, we have tapped into um, and done local co-ops with uh, some of the uh, uh, vote techs in the area and some of the colleges and we've been actively, we have uh, programs right now uh, with those students and uh, actually we had one graduate in June who we just hired uh, as a uh, designer. Uh, so there's some opportunities there. We do utilize workforce training fund. Uh, we just had something go through to train a bunch of uh, welders on uh, some of the uh, government um, uh, procedures and things like that. Uh, so we, we you know, we're, we're, act we're active in a lot of those, those categories. Um, we have a pressing need to expand our, our operation and we've uh, grown uh, over the last uh, several years. Uh, we've got our facility in Taunton, uh, which we, we intend on, on keeping. We have a facility in uh, East Bridgewater, which we've kind of grown out of. So we're looking for uh, a location with the infrastructure and the, LeBaron, the old LeBaron foundry site uh, appears to be very suitable for that. Um, our, our intention would be pretty much to gut that building, uh, to um, take down all of the unusable uh, external equipment and things like that that you probably see around the perimeter and um, more or less uh, refurbish that piece of property. Uh, so it's, it's been a little bit of a long road uh, getting to this point um, only because we've had, you know, the, the property itself is near Brownsfield and so there have been a little bit of issues there uh, with that particular property and so I think we have a very suitable operation uh, you know, to bring in, into the city. And, um, you know, we, we've actually had a uh, community uh, meeting uh, where we met the neighbors. Uh, Councilor Studinsky was there and uh, Michael Gallarani were at, uh, active in putting that whole thing together. I think the whole presentation went well and the introduction was well received. So I, I'm, I'm just hoping that, you know, we can, we can work things out, uh, you know, in the future. Um, in, in, in terms of our, our investment, I think a lot of it's summarized there in the uh, TIF application. But um, initially, I think we're looking at about uh, one and a half million dollar investment uh, right up front to start to get this uh, property uh, turned around, uh, probably about six million dollars over about a five year period, uh, creating, you know, jobs as we go. In, in, in more of the highly skilled areas, uh, but there will also be uh, some support jobs, uh, you know, available to whether it's maintenance and just general uh, laborers and activity. Brockton has a great, uh, you know, labor pool here uh, for, uh, uh, the, you know, the types of individuals that we're looking for. Uh, there's a lot of colleges and both techs around. So, um, you know, I think we're, we're situated in a good area for that. Um, we, um, we, you know, we, th we think it'll be a great opportunity going forward, uh, you know, for, for both ourselves and for the neighborhood and, and the city of Brockton. So, um, we're just hoping that we're, you know, we're received and with, with, uh, welcome, welcome arms. And I have to thank everybody that has brought us to this point, you know, with the 21st Century Club, Rob May and, and, and the mayor's office and, and everybody else that were involved that I, can't remember the names right now, but uh, thank you very much. Any questions? Right. Council Stewart. Mr. Chairman, I'm Mr. Burek, correct? Yes. Uh, so very excited that you're expanding. Thank you for doing business in Brockton. Um, and so I had a, a, a couple questions about the numbers. Sure. So I th initially I thought I said $35 million in projected payroll, but it's $3 million. There's some extra yeah. zeros there. So I was like, wow, that's a huge payroll. So of the, so $3.5 in payroll, is that, or is that the, payroll is part of the new expansion or is that the overall projection? It, it, it's, it's a combination. We, we probably would uh, move in about 20 or so individuals into the facility initially. We have somewhere around 25 percent, 30 percent of our workforce right now that's from Brockton. I see. And actually at the neighborhood meeting we brought a few of them, uh, you know, uh, so they would be familiar faces. Right. And uh, so the creation of jobs, I think the first uh, uh, 
big step comes in 2018. We're predicting we're hiring about 12 additional people. Mm -hmm. And in the interim, I think between that and uh, the renovation period is probably going to be about 24 months. You know, the time's running out this year already. And in order to really get into it, I think we're looking at about uh, 18 months to 24 months to really, you know, we have to gut the whole inside of that building. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, structures, external structures that we have to address. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, then we're, I, I, I'm curious about the, so if I were to take the 3.5 million and look at the 50 employees that you have, that, that's the average annual salary of $70,000. So is that an accurate picture? I would say it's uh, in excess of uh, 50. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the individual and their uh, skill level. I see. And those are jobs that include um, benefits? They might be the welders. They might be, right. um, you know, people that, that are cleaning or machining uh, the, the uh, product. Uh, and, and they're sure. all full-time? Uh, full-time, uh, <coughs> benefits. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Great. Well, again, thank you for uh, being in Brockton. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Council. Council Bonds? Yes, thank you. Uh, and thank you for coming to. I, I just want to get some clarification on the boundary line. So I'm not just spot on familiar with the area, a little bit of the surrounding area, but I've never been back here. So this is a building and land. Is that what's in this, this um, marking? Yes. Okay. And in your opinion, uh, in, in, your, in your professional opinion, this is going to be enough because I'm, when I'm looking on the map, I'm not really sure what this part is on the top that's left out. Um, but is that something that possibly your um, project will need in the future or do you think this is enough or will you expand more on that area? Is that possible, I guess? Yeah, I, the, the site itself, yeah, uh, right. I don't know the, what that the building, I believe, is 40 to 50,000 square feet okay. and the site itself is about five and a half acres. Oh, okay. Okay, so it um, it's, should be more than adequate. Okay, I'm just not familiar with the area. Yeah. I just didn't know how large it was. Okay. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> Councillors, any other? Take a favorable recommendation back to full council. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded to go back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. And I believe the next item is number 17. Yeah. Resolved that the city council hereby authorizes a tax increment financing plan encompassing the property described as 14 East Union Street Assessors Map 129, Plot 1, Parcel ID 129-233, East Union Street. And further, that the City Council approves the tax increment financing plan of the Commercial Yard LLC on behalf of D.W. Clark Incorporated. And forwards said application to the Massachusetts Economic Assistance Council for its approval and endorsement. Invited on roll, Mayor Bill Carpenter, John Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John O'Donnell, Assessor's Chairman, Rob May, Planning Director. Michael Gallerini, Executive Director, Brockton 21st Century Corp, Gordon Carr, Consultant to B21, Jeffrey Burek, President, D.W. Clark, and Richard Bland, Attorney. Good evening, Mr. Carter. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, I'll, I'll take you through fairly quickly, I think, because some of this was already discussed, uh, what's in this actual tax increment financing deal. Uh, I want to step back a second and, and um, remind all of you, I know you've dealt with these before, most of you, but we haven't had as many lately as as in past years, and so it's probably worthwhile talking about what they do. These are negotiated deals. Uh, it's a negotiation between the city and uh, uh, D.W. Clark uh, principals. And the basic structure of the deal is you set a base value, which is, you know, what we're getting in taxes on the place basically now, and that remains intact. And so the city is not foregoing any of the tax revenue it's getting now. The city, what it agrees to do is in exchange for an investment and a creation of jobs over a period of time to exempt from taxation a portion of the taxes which are the result of the investment that the company makes. So in this particular case, um, over the 15-year TIF, which is what it is, it's a 15-year tax increment financing plan, there's a slightly more than 50% tax benefit being granted to uh, on the 15-year total to the company, which is pretty typical of what we've done in past TIFs, slightly more than 50%. In some cases, we've been much more aggressive than that when we had to, but in this case, it's 50%. So the way the percentage exemption works is uh, it's 25% of the increment in the first two years, which are fiscal 17 and 18, as, they, as they're ramping up their investment. And then for a period from fiscal 19 through fiscal 20, 
three, they get a 100% exemption on the increment. And then that ramps down at the rate of 10% a year for fiscal 24 through 28. And then in the last three years of the deal, it's a 10% um, uh, exemption. So as a result of this, the city is expecting to get $1,350,000 roughly over that 15-year period in new tax revenue after we've exempted some of the tax, uh, as I described through those percentages, the company avoids about $1.55 million in new taxes as a result of it, continues to pay on its old uh, established uh, first year valuation base, and after the TIF expires, it's fully taxable. And I think they described it's about a $6 million investment they're in intending to make over several years with the creation of, I think, 25 jobs ultimately. Uh, my, my view personally is we have a piece of property there which is now an abandoned foundry. Uh, I, I really feel fortunate this is a higher end. I know it's an industrial zone, but this is a relatively benign kind of industrial use. Uh, it's a good company making, making sales to big corporations. I think we're fortunate seeing that this particular piece of uh, property isn't going to sit vacant for a long time, so I'm happy to see this personally. Councils? Mr. Chairman. Councillor Azak. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Conner, I'm not sure if, who this question would be for, but um, I know you keep mentioning jobs, but how, what are we doing to guarantee that Brockton residents will get some of these jobs? Any first preference, I think, if qualified, are they not? Yeah, they, there's a, excuse me, there's a um, commitment in the, in the agreement that they would, um, all things being equal, make, make preferences to hiring um, Brockton resident, qualified Brockton residents. That you can't, we can't bind them to do that. Um, but they're committing to uh, working with uh, the Career Center and, and, and local organizations here to identify qualified candidates uh, for those positions when they're posted. Uh, the agreement also has provisions where they provide annual reporting both to the Commonwealth and to uh, the City of Brockton on, the, on that hiring um, and they're meeting their employment projections and all of that. So there will be a report that will come out? Yes. On, oh, okay, very good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, just follow up on that. So, yes. Mr. Carr, uh, what are the uh, provisions in the agreement? So, if uh, I'm assuming there are uh, there's a laundry list of things that we're expecting uh, from the company to, to receive this this TIF agreement, what happens if their end of the agreement isn't met? So, we we suspend the TIF agreement. Uh, you, you you can petition uh, the Commonwealth to quote decertify. Mm -hmm. um, Typically what's happened is the Commonwealth has done that before the municipality um, because the, the Commonwealth uh, receives the reporting functions and after the first couple of years, uh, the, the state gives a company some time to sort of ramp up and they tend to take into consideration sometimes economic conditions, but um, they can also uh, begin the process. They provide the company with a notice or a warning of sorts that you're short of your job projections. My recollection from the state is um, their language says that you need to be materially in default, which they consider less than 50% of your job projections uh, uh, in order to begin that de decertification process. Um, and then they um, will vote to do that and they notify the municipality. And it, in, in this case, because it's a local incentive, it will be up to the municipality to decide whether to decertify in that case or not. I see. Great. Thank you. Helpful. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Thank Mr. Councillor. Any other Councillor Rodriguez or Councillor Sullivan first? No, I just wanted to, uh, as a follow-up to uh, Councillor Stewart, you talked about the 25 positions that you're looking to uh, possibly fill. Um, what are some of these uh, qualifications that we're talking about? Are we talking about uh, college graduates, technicians, laborers? Just, just an idea so that we have a sense. Sure, I think it runs the full gamut. Sorry. Um, there, there are going to be uh, jobs at all levels. Um, certainly uh, in, in our fabrication department, uh, you, you have people that are, uh, you know, possibly painting, grinding, cleaning, buffing, uh, those, those types of probably lower level, lower skill type uh, jobs that we would train. Uh, but then you have uh, people that are qualified for welders and machinists. And, um, and those would, would certainly be uh, uh, different, different levels uh, of those types of people. Uh, in, in terms of our staffing in the office, uh, we have uh, 
uh, CAD designers, uh, we have uh, engineers, and, uh, and so those expectations would be a little, little bit uh, higher in terms of the, you know, their job qualifications. Uh, supervisors, uh, sh you know, ship supervisors, that type of thing. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's basically a manufacturing type jobs. And, um, you know, I, w I would think from what I've seen, and we've, we've been in the, in the area, I myself since 1984, at least in the, in the East Bridgewater area, and certainly advertising all the time in the Brockton Enterprise. So, uh, you know, we're pretty familiar and, and working through the career centers and things like that here, you know, with, with uh, uh, the job market around. And, you know, we've been to the you know, job fairs and so forth. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for believing in our city, and uh, welcome thank to our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I was just going to uh, remind the Council that the TIF has been a really uh, useful tool um, that we've utilized as the Council, right? Uh, Bernardi Auto, Keneally Foods, Crown Linen, uh, to bring businesses here, and this is going to fit within that mold, and also W.B. Mason that was uh, potentially going to leave, and, and we needed to keep that here. So uh, with that, I'm going to make a favorable recommendation back, back to the council. Uh, on, on the motion. On the motion, Council Burns. E yes, I just have one more question about the jobs. In looking at your um, EDIP application, it gives the projected um, workforce number. It increases from 2018 to 2022, and it's to 25 people. But in this one-page sheet, in, in your assertion today, you said 50 new jobs. So is, are these added on through the years, or does it cap at 25 or 50? Yeah, I, I, think, the, I, I think in the one pager, um, I, I don't know what it says, but that was in anticipation of they're going to be moving probably 25 folks over and creating 25. So it'll be, new, it'll be 50 new jobs to Brockton, uh, but 25 net new jobs to the city. I think that's probably the confusion. Does that make sense? Okay, moving to and adding to. Yes. Got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you clear. Council. Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, a gentleman, and uh, welcome to Brockton as well. We appreciate it truly. truly. Council, just a reminder next uh, Monday is a holiday, and our meeting for city council will be Tuesday evening, Tuesday evening, October 13th, 8 o'clock p.m., right here in the uh, council chambers. Any other uh, business? Mr. Chairman, a moment of personal privilege. Council Razak. I'd like to remind everybody that this Saturday, October 10th, is um, Tower Fest at DW Fields Park. So I hope to see everybody there. It's from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m. Uh, it's a great family day. Spend the day at DW Fields Park. So hope to see you there. Thank you. It's usually a great time, too, Council. So thank you for that. Any other business to come before this committee this evening? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. This is a celebration.